Welcome to DRD Technology. As an ANSYS channel partner, we provide simulation capabilities in the areas of fluid dynamics, structural mechanics, electromagnetics, and systems and multiphysics. DRD seldom supports ANSYS software in the central United States. We also provide consulting and training for the entire ANSYS software suite. Our mission is to help clients maximize their utilization of ANSYS software to the highest degree possible. My name is Ben Banerjee and I will be presenting to you how to do durability and fatigue analysis using ANSYS ENCODE Design Live. This is part one of two presentations that I'm going to make. In this first part of the presentation, I'm going to show you how to do static fatigue damage evaluation using ANSYS Design Live. If you open up ANSYS Workbench and if you have ANSYS Design Life installed, you should be able to see these menu options for ANSYS Encode Design Life. Let me explain what these options are. The first six out of the seven options that you see loaded in the ANSYS Settings panel, they correspond to Stress Life and Strain Life Fatigue Analysis. And the Encode SN Vibration is for Vibration Fatigue Analysis. In this part of the presentation today, I will focus mainly on static damage uh, from mainly static loads or time-dependent loads and for power spectral density spectrum loads, for loads mainly in the frequency domain, you would have to do a vibration fatigue analysis. I will present that to you in a second part of a presentation. So let's proceed with this static damage fatigue evaluation and I've got this model here where I've got this shaft that is subjected to two loads. So it's a multi-step analysis. And in the first load step, I'm applying a force. And if you notice, it's an unit load that I'm applying to the part. So it's a one Newton bending load in the first load step. And then in the second load step, it goes to zero. And I'm applying a moment, essentially a torque load that's effective in the second load step. Also, it's an unit load. The idea is that we take the finite element results for this unit load cases, for this non-proportional load case, into ANSYS Design Life, and then we will be pairing this finite element results with appropriate time series channel data to generate the stress and strain history, which will be used for further fatigue damage evaluation. First, I'd like to point out the material property that I'm using. And by default, ANSYS is a structural steel. It's important to note that if you want to do fatigue analysis in design life, you will need to use one of those material data from the ANSYS ENCODE design, li design life library. To access the library, you go to the engineering data sources, and you should see an ENCODE underscore mat ML loaded if you've already got that loaded. And if not, I can show you a way to add that to your system. Assuming that you don't see the ENCODE mat ML option, what you would need to do is click this option here that says add an existing data source from file. And then you simply need to go to the installation folder for ANSYS Design Life under Glyphworks materials folder and simply point to that XML file that says ENCODE underscore mat ML. That should load this library. So for our particular analysis, I'm using this carbon SAAE steel grid. And a quick look through the material data should show us the, the SN curve that we're using. It's for a fully reversed. And then we are using the strain life parameters. This is a strain life curve. I'm going to quickly go and assign this particular material property to our part, and then I'm going to run the analysis. Once the model is solved, a quick look through the results. You can see the, the maximum principal stress for the load step one corresponding to the bending load case and for the load step two corresponding to the torsion load case. Now I'm going to move over to the Workbench project page and I'm going to drag over an EN time series option and drop it onto the solution cell of static structural. 
this will share the data from my finite element analysis and feed that into the solution cell of the ENCODE EN time series block. At this point, I'm going to click on solution and open up Design Life. Within Design Life, you have these different glyphs that are already preloaded with this particular system. Let's do a quick walkthrough of these different glyphs. This glyph here, that's a simulation input, is a finite element input glyph. And if you check the display, it should show you the finite element results that you've carried over from ANSYS. I can right click, go to properties, and I can see that the file.rst exists. And I can load the results. You can see for both my load step, the results have come over. And I can choose to display those results here in Design Live. The next step I'm going to do is to define the time series input for my analysis. Currently, there is nothing defined. So I go to the properties, I right click on the glyph for time series input, and then I click the button to add data, and I simply go to the folder where my time series file exists, do a quick scan, and it shows me that S3T file with the shaft loads that I can now apply to my model. And then be sure to add this, hit this arrow to make this shaft load available for, the, for this design that I've run. Then I hit OK and OK one more time, and then you can show this one test data now available. It, you can see the test data has uh, two channels, one for the, the vertical load case corresponding to the bending load, and the other one corresponding to the torque load for the moment load. The next thing I'm going to do is focus my attention on the strain life analysis glyph, and then right click and go to the material mapping, and then I will add make sure that the carbon SAE steel is being added for the analysis, which I can see it's already being used. And just to be sure, I want to make the default material also be carbon SAE steel. And then I right click, and then I go to the load mapping, which is the next step, where I define my, my pairing of time series with the, loads, with the finite element results. In this particular example, you can see that my two time step results for my load step 1 and load step 2 are already preloaded in the description and they sort of autofill in the description category as well. Just a quick visual check to confirm that, you can see the time 1 corresponds to the bending load finite element results. The time 2 corresponds to the, the moment load that was applied to the finite element model, the results corresponding to that. And the time series input has, uh, design life is smart enough to paired them up, you can see that the vertical load goes with the load step 1 and the torque load goes with the load step 2. If for some particular reason you want to change these assignments, you can always uncheck the auto configure uh, button that does let you assign or pair the time series input with the respective finite element results. Another thing to point out here is there are different options like divider, scale factor to scale the loads, for instance. In this particular example, I want to scale these loads uh, so it would further sort of amplify the time series channel to amplify the stress and strain history. And a quick look through the equation used for the scale factor and the offset and the load divider. The, the final, the stress history is a function of the scale factor multiplied with the load multiplier time series channel, plus you can add an offset, and this multiplies with the the finite element stress divided by the load divider. In our example, we'll take all the defaults, but we'll use a scale factor of 50. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here, is use a scale factor of 50 for each of my time series channels. And then I'm going to hit OK. And then I right click and do a quick observation of the advanced edit button just to see what the defaults are being used on the run. And we'll take all the defaults here and uh, proceed with the design life calculation. At this point, I'm going to hit the run button. Now that the model is solved, let's take a quick look through the results. So we come over to the fatigue, the AFE display glyph, and I'm going to expand that, and right click and go to properties, and right now it's plotting damage, but I can easily switch over to life. So for this particular run, you can see that the shaft 
can survive a little more than eight cycles of this particular time series loading. This concludes the first part of the presentation where I wanted to show you how to evaluate fatigue life of a simple part uh, under uh, static loading.